Not only are we here to share best practices for addressing workforce shortages, but we're here, we're excited to talk about and announce today a new dual study apprenticeship program to the state of Nebraska. My name's Maury Sauls, I'm the president of Class Omaha, and we make this thing. I'm very proud if you don't see. With that, I would like to offer up and ask Pete Ricketts, our governor, to come forward and to share with us some of his comments. Well, hey, thank you very much, Maury, uh, for the introduction and for the opportunity to be here today. It really is an exciting announcement that we have. I want to thank you very much for uh, coming and uh, allowing us to be here and everybody who's participating in this. What we're all here today is to help figure out how we can help Nebraska families be able to get that better job, to be able to help take care of their kids, send them to school, go on that family vacation, and enjoy the good life here in our state. And that comes through education. Now, if you look at the state of Nebraska, it's important to think about how we develop our workforce. We have one of the lowest unemployment rates in the country at 2.8%. We've been able to maintain over a million non-farm jobs now for three years. Our workforce participation rate is the fourth highest in the country. And we literally have tens of thousands of jobs that are available right now today in our state. And as I travel the state, the number one thing people talking about, the number one thing companies talking about, is the ability to find skilled labor. Find that right person to be able to hire. And that's why, at the state of Nebraska, we've got a four-pillar strategy to grow our state, and the number one pillar is developing our people and connecting them to great paying jobs. The other pillars include making sure we're in government more like a business, make it more effective and more efficient, making sure we're controlling our spending and providing tax relief, and then finally promoting ourselves around our country and around the world. But we're going to focus today on that first pillar. Now, here in Nebraska, we've done a number of things to continue to develop our workforce. We have implemented a reemployment system in our Department of Labor. And what that means is, for anybody seeking those unemployment benefits, they have to sit down with the jobs coach first and get training on how to find the next best job. Train a resume that's searchable online by companies. Pointing toward job training to be able to help them get that next best job. And not only that, are we doing that for our folks who are employed, but we've also offered that up to our families who are on food stamps, the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, so that they can get better jobs as well. We've been able to reduce the amount of time people are spending unemployed, and it's allowed us to reduce our unemployment insurance tax, and we've been able to help families on food stamps get better jobs on average with an increase of $10,000 a year for the families who've been able to get that better job. And every one of those families has reduced or eliminated their need for food stamps. We've also focused on trying to get a talent pipeline going with our Developing Youth Talent Initiative. It's a grant program that encourages private sector companies to work with our school districts starting in seventh and eighth grade to get kids interested in careers in manufacturing and IT. Uh, to Stefano Manufacturing, for example, here in Omaha has created a mobile welding lab that they've taken around to, to area schools. And that's helped encourage people to take a look at those career opportunities. What we'd like to see is those kids in seventh and eighth grade then go on to a career academy, and then follow it up with post-secondary education. To help out with that this year, I propose expanding that developing new talent initiative from two grants a year to 12 grants a year, and a Nebraska Talent Scholarship Program, $4,000 a year scholarship program for our community colleges, our state colleges, and university, focusing on those key areas where we have high demand. Things like computer information systems, industrial technology, all those areas where we know we're going to need a lot of careers in the future we want young people to take advantage of. We also have started working with our U.S. Department of Labor with regard to collaborating on how to promote the Registered Apprenticeship Program going back to 2016 and making people, more companies more aware of that and promoting that to our people. And in the Department of Economic Development, our program to sponsor internships has impacted about two, well, we've helped sponsor about 2,000 internships since 2011. So you can see with all of these things, we are working on how to develop our workforce, trying to help connect our young people to those great paying job opportunities and making sure they've got the skills to be able to take them. 
And that's why it's so exciting to be here today to talk about this ICAP program, this industry uh, uh, consortium for advanced technical training apprenticeship program. It is a program that really is based upon the German model of looking at how you can earn while you learn, that you have the opportunity to be able to work while you're pursuing your certificate or associate's degree, and focused on knowledge, theory, and hands-on education to really help our young people be able to get those skills that they need to be able to take the great career jobs that we have available. And it's very exciting and very pleased to be able to uh, work on this. In fact, uh, I was talking with some of the folks here earlier, like uh, Mark uh, Tompkins, that had to, this uh, really kind of started with a conversation we had at a baseball game last summer about what can we further do to be able to help people get those skills. And this program through the uh, German-American Chamber of Commerce is one that's, again, modeled on one that they have in Germany. That really, and this one right here, is really going to, I think, give credibility to what these programs are about. Because everybody knows the reputation that Germany has for advanced manufacturing and their ability to train people to be able to take those jobs. So this is very, very exciting. And of course, today what we're going to be doing is signing that agreement with Klaus and Grateful to be the first two Nebraska companies to participate in this ICAP program. So I'm very excited and honored to be here to be able to do that as well. And they're going to be also signing with regard to the Registered Apprenticeship Program as well for the Department of Labor. So this is another step that we can do to be able to help make sure we're connecting Nebraskans to those great paying jobs, making sure they've got the skills to be able to take those jobs. And that will help companies like Klaus and Grapel be able to find the workers they need to be able to grow here in our state. And at the end of the day, what this all does is allow Nebraska families that opportunity to be able to get that better paying job, to allow their kids to be able to go to school, to go on that family vacation, and enjoy the good life here in our state. Folks, that, at the end of the day, is what it's all about. So I want to thank all the partners who are here today to be able to help do this. Uh, the folks from Klaus and Great Pole, as well as our Department of Labor, the German Chamber of Commerce, we also have representatives from uh, Dream It, Do It, which is an important part of doing this as well. Uh, the Nebraska Manufacturing Advisory Council. Our, all of our partners, whether at the federal, state, or local level, this really is a team effort to make sure we pull this all together. And I want to thank all of you who have helped make this day happen. God bless you all for all that you're doing here in our state to continue to grow Nebraska. And God bless the great state of Nebraska. We would like to proceed with our ceremonial signing of the companies and state pledge to this program. I would ask that Matthias Risto, President of Class Omaha, Mark Zondo, from the, as the President of Great Bowl North America, would you please come back to the stage? And Governor, we do ask you to come back too. <laughs> also, I'd ask that John Albine, Deb Krimitz Risinger, Tom, uh, Mark Tompkins and Andrew Goldis, would you please come to the stage as well and stand behind the parties and uh, we'll have the signing and an opportunity for some pictures. Okay. So, officially, sign. <laughs> yes, please. And we will even allow you to take the pen with you. Yeah. So I think each one signs up. If you want that mind, uh, please stand up with the certificates so we can get a few pictures as a group here. Right now, that'd be great. <laughs> 